Hello, readers. Welcome to Book Launch Tuesdays, the best thing to happen to Tuesday since tacos. I'm Kelly Lynn Colby, Editorial Director at Cursed Dragon Ship Publishing. And today we celebrate the launch of Revelation by James Fox, published by Chris Kennedy Press. Chris Kennedy Publishing. In Revelation, the thrilling climax of the Soul Saga, the solar system faces its darkest hour. General Keith Brennan races against time to thwart the deployment of a city-destroying weapon of precedented magnitude. As the fate of millions hangs in the balance, Brennan's resolve is put to the ultimate test. You know, I have to say, uh, Chris Kennedy Publishing is taking really good care of you, James, because this they back are. cover copy is awesome. I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, they do. They do such a good job. Like yeah. the covers are great. The mm-hmm. just everything, and and they're they're so pleasant to work with too. So I'm 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 spoiled rotten. They're yeah, really no. Too. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Because even for me, as you know, trying to help you know publicize the work, that it the way the cover copy is written on the back, I can just pull out a paragraph and still sell it. James, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It's yes, always worth I, a good job when you get another book done. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's it's funny because I really set out to write the, the first trilogy really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I denied myself that celebratory shot of whiskey for books one and two because I wanted to just do it when the series was done. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was really good to have that shot of whiskey, that shot of writer's tears at the end of the series. So. Well, I mean, if you wait until the end of the series, I think you can have more than one shot. Well, good, because I, I, I need it more than one, but uh, I will only admit to the one. <laughs> it's the only one going on camera, however. <laughs> I only took one photo. Um, no video was was, was taken that evening. Uh. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell us a little bit about Soul Saga. So obviously we have this huge, like, you know, it's it's a, a sci-fi. Is it a space opera? Like, does it go across or is it more military sci-fi? You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of a blend of a few things. Mm-hmm. I know that's terrible to say, but it's kind of a no, space fun. drama. Uh, okay. It's 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 set in a military setting because mm-hmm. it's about it's about a a revolution. Uh, it's about a human revolution on Mars. Um, that that you know, kind of overthrowing a, a corrupt government mm-hmm. and and just the the what I tried to really do was I tried to take like historical uh, context and and stretch it out into space. Right. So this is written. If you change it from, you know, spaceships and and rail guns to muskets, you could have a revolutionary war story. Like it's, you know, it's very human. It's very character based. Um, you know, it's it's people having to choose allegiances. You know, are the day do they stay with their nine to five job because they work for the government, mm-hmm. or do they go where they believe and fight for the revolutionaries? So, um, I tried to make a really really human story in a sci fi setting with um, with relatable characters and related, relatable situations. And it's only set like 200 years in the future. So um, hopefully it is still very relatable. Very relatable. Um, it, yeah. Well, technology has come a long so, way and our brain hasn't changed. So that makes perfect sense. Much, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> totally, yeah. yeah. Yep, nope, I yeah. love it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a fun thing and it, it was really born, I was actually on a movie set mm-hmm. directing a feature film that was sci-fi. Uh, kind of a Lord of the Flies in space. Ooh. It's awesome. Um, and uh, I was talking to to uh, um, one of the crew members who was former military, and he's mm-hmm. telling me all these stories. And I started thinking, like, wow, like these stories would be really cool in a sci-fi setting. And it kind of just devolved into me brainstorming for writing a TV pilot on the set of another feature film, which I got in trouble for. Yeah, because who owns what I mean, now? That's right. You've got to be careful. Well, well, not not just that, but like I was supposed to be focusing on doing my job, um, and instead I'm like scribbling notes as fast as I can on the back of my script about this this new uh, pilot I want to write. So, uh, so I wrote the pilot, and then um, <laughs> and inevitably I wound up writing the books. So, um, I mean, that sounds I like just, a writer. You can't help it. I can't help it. Uh huh. I can't help it. So nothing's ever moving fast enough for me. Um, yeah. I love it. You'll never be satisfied. It's like Hamilton. Yeah, by the time the project's actually done, I'm already like three more projects deep. So right. people are like, well, take a moment, celebrate yourself. I'm like, what? I'm not done yet. They're like, you just Wait, finished your book. 
I was like, no, no, no. I've got three more that I want to finish. <laughs> but I have this so. one I really need to do right now. You know, you <laughs> can celebrate and it doesn't have to be over. You can still go on to the next thing. I, I figure what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get to like 65 and then just celebrate for all of my accomplishments. <laughs> I'm partying like for the next 20 years. That's <laughs> right. Right. Just like strap a keg on my back and follow me, people. We're going. <laughs> I love it. That makes me happy. Well, so characters, there's multiple ones just in that little paragraph, but of course there is. This is the third series, right? So where does the yeah. first book actually start? Who do we start with? So we start with Keith Brennan. He's the first character. Uh, he's on Mars, and he he's they're doing the the practice or the rehearsals for the honor guard for the the ceremony that is going to grant Mars its independence. Um, and we get to know a lot about Brennan as a person on page one. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it because it's actually my favorite line in all three books. Um, and it's very snarky and funny. So hopefully everybody gets it. Um, if it's line one, but, you could just tell us. They can look at it. Well, it's page one, page one. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. But page one, yes, it's 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 great. Um, one of the one of the ways he describes something um, is also very like personal to me. Um, and uh, and and I think it just really kind of like cements in your mind who Keith Brennan is. So um, you know he he's kind of a reluctant hero, kind of a I was like I, I kind of call him the like the reluctant king. You know he he calls the shots. He is the boss, but deep down he's he's uh, you know a complex individual. He's not just shouting orders and gruff and you know whatever. Like he has real emotions and real feelings. And and uh, a civil war is complicated. Revolutionary yes. revolution is extremely complicated, uh -huh. and being torn between duty and and what you feel is right. I mean, that's a, just a really. I I hope no one ever has to go through that because it's um, even as as writing the character. I was reading accounts from the Civil War uh, journal entries and stuff that that are available uh, for read, and just the pain. Like I was reading a journal entry about a guy who who wound up finding his brother's corpse um, out in the middle of the woods. For, on the other side and he didn't know how to mm. feel about it right because right. It's, you know like He's they the won He's but at brother. what cost right yeah. yeah so so i really wanted to try to instill as much of that um as i could into the into the story and, and into the characters so there's a lot of uh, book one is really kind of set up so that you get to the end and you're not really sure who the bad guys are uh because the players involved don't really know who the bad guys are um and then book two kind of starts you know things start happening and then by book three that's why it's called revelation is you know you you start learning who the bad guys are what their motives are um and just how dark and sinister this whole thing really is what this war is really about exactly and and what people are willing to to sacrifice for their own selfish desires it's it's you know it's pretty heavy and a lot of it's based on just like real stuff you know like uh, I mean, not like real stories and real people, but like real human emotions, you know, real, real things that happen. Um, you know, it's not some alien invasion. It's not, you know, some motiveless, you know, evil that happens. It's not some accident. Like these are like motivated people that are yeah. doing stuff to, yeah, they're just very human. I love that. It's when you see people who don't read sci-fi and they're all like, oh yeah, you know, crazy spaceships and weird weapons and blah, blah, whatever. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. The magic of sci-fi is actually the characters. Yeah. And so I'm wondering which character, when you're writing, which one surprised you the most? Um, I think the one that surprised me the most was Lisa Colt. So she's a okay. young uh, fighter pilot, uh, <laughs> just getting fresh out of like the academy or whatever, the flight flight academy, um, and gets mobilized for this. And I I struggled with her voice. I struggled with trying to mm -hmm. like really nail down writing her and. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think I spent the most work on her, mm. and and I was I, I I didn't really feel good about it until, like I, it just landed one day, and then I was like, this is my favorite character. I've just realized this is actually my favorite character. I love writing her. She's so complex, and mm -hmm. like her struggles. Uh, so her her mom is an admiral, and you know like runs the fleet and and they have a very strange relationship and lisa really wants to prove herself on her own and not just be like the admiral's daughter mm -hmm. um she's very talented but she's got the stigma that's immediate with the name and 
Um, I don't know. I just, I had so much fun writing her. Every, I actually would like, you know, rush chapters to get to her because I could see her coming up in my, in my chapter outline. I'm like, oh, only two more chapters until I get to write another Lisa chapter. So uh, <laughs> I think that was my biggest surprise. That's so cool. Like this character I couldn't figure out. Now she's my favorite. I love that. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, Northern Lights wants to know, what inspired you to become an author? What inspired me to become an author? Um, the inevitability of death. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, uh, so I'm a filmmaker, that's my day uh -huh. job. Um, and I realized uh -huh. that, uh, you know, the average lifespan of a film project is about five years, you know, from, from like concept to completion and distribution. And, uh, I was looking at my pile of scripts just to constantly increase. Um, and like the number of movies very slowly increase. And I was like, I have way more stories to tell than I will be able to in my lifetime. I need to find another way. Um, and so that just, that thought was kind of um, coinciding with that, where I was like, you know, I was doing the math on how long could I like really realistically live for and how many stories can I tell in that amount of time. And uh, at the same time, I was shopping around the pilot for the Soul Saga, uh, the description that I wrote. And somebody told me that if it was based on a book series or a comic book, they'd buy it right here on the spot in the meeting. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll go write the book step. And like, I stood up and I walked out and I went home and started writing the book. So, so cool. Um, and then it, 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 it became pretty natural. I mean, I've been storytelling for 20 years uh, mm -hmm. in film. So, I mean, the, the writing was tough. I mean, I wrote like it's a 15 different kind pages. Of writing. Like, oh, Very different I'm kind of done. Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm done. The plot's over. Oh, but there's no internal monologue. There's no emotion. <laughs> there's no smells. Oh shoot. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> So different skill, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so really it was that it was me realizing that I only have so many years left. And if mm -hmm. I want to tell more than five or six stories, I had to find another medium. And so now I'm trying to be a five or six book a year author and, um, and make and, all these and, films. Yeah. Don't tell anybody, but I'm like in my director's chair, like, which is right here. Um, uh, Working on my working on my stories and writing on my book and when they're like, what are you doing? Are you taking notes? I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. Yep, I'm ready for the next shot whenever you are. So don't tell anybody. Okay, we know. won't tell anyone. Because nobody. Yeah, this isn't recorded or anything. It's fine. No, no one will ever know. Of course. Very safe. We're, I mean, we're under an NDA, right? <laughs> I can't remember doing that. That's right. All the audience, anyone who listens or listens later, must all <laughs> make sure to sign an NDA. <laughs> They'll be like, sure, exactly. I will. My name is Pickle McPickleson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. The internet's just a fad, yeah. anyways. Exactly. It'll go away. It's fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. It'll it'll disappear. I mean, this was all AI, right? I just right? I, I never did that interview. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> it's it's a deep fake. It was totally not me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, oh I mean, it can't be hard to deep fake me. Just put awkward up there and everything will be great. Everything will be great and distracted with all the different chats. That's the fun part, right? It's like being yeah. on a movie set, right? I mean, how many things do you have to keep troll of when you're on that? Everything that you have to pay attention to, right? So, you know, it's funny on, on the movie sets, like they really try to like quarantine me. Like I've been threatened with being gaff taped to my chair because <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm a Gemini, so you leave me alone for about 12 seconds, and then I'm gone. I'm going to go do something. Like, I, you know, so my ADs have af actually threatened to gaff tape me to my chair. And, That's you know, so, funny. Um, so I try really hard to stay focused because <laughs> otherwise it's a disaster. They're like, you can't leave. As soon as you leave, we have a question. <laughs> yeah, there's like, nobody can find you. Why are you outside? Like, you don't even smoke. Why are you outside with the smokers? It's like, but they were talking about interesting stuff. <laughs> I know the next movie. No, we already have the next movie planned. Okay. The next, next, next movie. <laughs> right. I love it. That's so wonderful. All these ideas. I love that. Cause a question we get, I'm sure you've gotten it as well. A lot of authors get, or where do you get your ideas? And it's like, they're just there. They're just there. Like you just walk down the street and you get ideas. So I love you. It's like, yeah. I'm going forward to get as many of these darn things out as I possibly can. I love that. So I'm wondering, why did you do sci-fi? Like why, why is that where your heart went for this series? 
so I think sci-fi in particular, also fantasy, but mostly sci-fi in particular, it, it's it's a way to have hard conversations mm -hmm. about the human experience in a safe way. Um, if we try to talk about the 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 the, the, all the hard questions that are posed in my books mm -hmm. in, in contemporary time, we will have an argument. I mean, it doesn't really right. matter who's involved or what your views are, or whatever. Like they're just they're so heavy that we have a hard time processing them in 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 contemporary times. But if we push it forward 200 years, everybody can have a great conversation about it, and we're totally fine with it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just it's true because and I I I think that's because uh, especially to sci-fi because mm -hmm. it's in the future and we feel like we can figure it out by then, right? Um, uh, if it's really bad in the future, well, we've got 200 years to fix it. If it's really good in the future, then, well, we have 200 years to get there, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I find that it's a really nice playground to have very, very hard emotional discussions uh, that, that and, and I want people to ask internal questions uh, that are hard and, and you know, difficult and challenging, and then right. like, have, like continue that discourse with other readers, uh, mm -hmm. and sci-fi is the way to do that. And it has always been the way to do that. I love it. Yeah, Lainey Sutterman says T20. <laughs> I'm assuming hey, you know what that means. <laughs> I know what it means. <laughs> yeah, Lainey says that you are their favorite. So nicely. Oh, done. yay. <laughs> yay. Uh, she's she's the uh, the stage manager for the for the musical that I'm in. And uh, she's great. She's great. Yay. I, I want to talk and about that, I, too. I'm like, you can't yeah, choose one form of, of expression, can you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I told you I'm a Gemini. I get bored so easy. Um, but actually, the funny story with that. So my my kids were actually in in the theater program there, which is great. Uh, uh, Golden Chain Theater. Shout out to to all the Golden Chain Theater people. Mm -hmm. um, and they love it so much. And there's they, there's an insane amount of talent uh, at that theater. And uh, my kids have such a good time with them. So. Um, Christmas was coming up and my kids come up to me and they're like, we want you to do Christmas Carol with us. And I was like, I don't do stage. Like I don't, I don't act. I don't, you know, I don't sing. I can dance, but nobody wants to see me dancing. Up no one's going right? to pay to see that. That's right. <laughs> right. And um, one of the, one of the theater directors like came up and, and, uh, and was like, no, no, no you're going to do it. And, uh, uh Jennifer and she she just basically like twisted my arm and made made it happen um, and then I loved it and all the people were great and it was super fun with my kids and um, so when Fiddler came around I was like well I have to do Fiddler now um, <laughs> even though I'm so behind on work and <laughs> it's just, you know anyway I just you know they're my people so I, I I have to be there and hanging out with them can I tell you this is called addiction and this is exactly what happens with theater like you can't just do one show I'm sorry it just doesn't happen that way yeah I know it's, it's gonna be bad I know it's gonna be bad eventually it's gonna bite me in the butt but you know what I just am not sleeping and it's fine it's Everything's fine. fine who needs sleep it's fine everything <laughs> exactly. will be great yeah Jennifer Olson says woohoo uh GCT for life <laughs> I love it I love it um yeah, we did. I grew up in the theater, and we, but I could not sing either. I cannot sing to save my life. I can carry a tune, so I'm great with, like, Girl Scout songs where you just have to be loud. Um, but actual singing, no. So whenever there was a musical, I was backstage. Whenever it was a play, I was on stage. And that's how, you know, that's, yeah. Nope. I feel yeah, like. I just, I just, I just fake singing, you know? <laughs> like, I'm just in the background mouthing the words. Although, lately, I have been, like, sneaking some words out here and there. I'm very shy about my voice. Mm. Um so you know it's uh it's i i i'm scared of snakes too uh it's like my my big phobia or whatever but i tell people i'd rather be like locked in a box with rattlesnakes as sing on stage so well apparently yeah. not because you're in fiddler and you're obviously singing a, a bit even if it's no, background don't tell anybody don't tell anybody <laughs> don't tell anybody <laughs> Yeah, Two Dorks TV says sleep is overrated. That's right. We have stuff to do. We have stories to tell. We have things to do, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan yeah, I mean, uh, says I... that you sing Laheim good. Oh, Ethan, get out of here. You're <laughs> lying. You can't hear me. You're you're fake drunk. You know, it's really a thing, actually. Like, we have to fake drinking. And so we've got this whole, like, plan where we're trying to get through three bottles of what's supposed to be schnapps in the like three minutes that the we have before the scene but like 
didn't faking be a drug? It's like somehow maybe I've drank too much in my life or something because it was too easy. It's like the too body natural. remembers. <laughs> yeah. The body remembers. Like, oh, we're doing this. I didn't feel any alcohol come in. Okay, great. Let's do okay, this okay. thing. I'm like backstage stumbling and feeling nauseous. I'm like, I didn't really drink anything. You can quit acting out, body. <laughs> It's weird. It's very weird. It's very weird. <laughs> it's surreal. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Just shows you the power of the mind, right? True. True. When the mind is obedient. See, in that case, it was not obedient. <laughs> not yeah, obedient. Just, just like everything else in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we talked a bunch about the character. I always talk about characters because that's why people actually read books. So um, sometimes they don't even know that, right? They're like, the setting's cool and that's it. But the reason they go back to them, the reason they talk about them, all that is the characters. So first of all, I love that you already know that. I don't know if it's because of your, uh, your directing that you already knew that or whatever it is, but you already knew that. So I love that. Um, everyone I talk to doesn't realize that, right? So you did and that's fantastic. So I'm wondering which character do you relate to the most? Oh boy, that's uh, that's tough. So uh, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of me in every character, right? I think that's um, honest. Yeah, and that's I, usually true. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that Jonathan Spaulding was was the character that I set out to write that was supposed to just kind of be a carbon copy of me, mm -hmm. but he's really not. He kind of he kind of became his own person, his own character. He's maybe like the 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 darker side of me, maybe. Okay, fair. Um, but but I really think that that the character that I think is most represented by like my my qualities uh, and um, quirks is uh, mm -hmm. Edward McGarren. Uh and you know he kind of goes from this um, part time crook like playboy uh, kind of joke of a man to um, bigger things. Right? I don't want to don't want to ruin it, but um, nope, that's and, I, that's and, a good description. You got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. uh, and. You know, not that not that I think that I'm doing bigger things or whatever, but like, you know, the way he he portrays himself and carries himself and lets things affect him and the empathy that he has for people and that he's not mm -hmm. scared to lean into that empathy. Um, I really identify with quite a lot. I have a lot of empathy myself. I get into a lot of really bad situations because I'm I feel bad for something. And then I'm just like, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm going to do this, even though I know it's a bad idea. And I'm going to go down with the ship and I don't care. Um <laughs> So I think that I think you leave with your heart. Um, yeah, yeah. It, and so Ed, Ed McCarran, I think, is is uh, and uh, I named that character Ed after my dad because uh, he was you know supposed to try to be the influence on that. And then my dad passed away during the writing of the book. Oh, so I'm sorry. It just really, really kind of uh, you know uh, is a character that just like means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Like it just it really tugs at my heartstrings. Um, and and. When you read book three, you're gonna be like, "You were imagining this is your dad. You're an a hole." <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "Look, we all so, had a dark oh. side, okay?" Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's a reason for all of this, okay? It's going, it's going somewhere. Just go with it. <laughs> So having talked about all that, we do like sci-fi, though, because the setting is so cool. Um, so uh, I'm wondering what, so it's 200 years in the future. What, in your opinion, is the coolest technology that you put in the future you wish we had now? Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, huh. I think I would probably, I mean, look, just forgetting, like, being able to travel among the, the solar system, you know, relatively freely, like, let's just put a pass on that because that's, that's too easy. Okay. Um, I really like some of the medical stuff that, mm. that I've put into the book. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the whole idea of like trying to triage somebody on a battlefield that's in zero gravity, that's going to get messy. Like that's insane. Like how do yeah. you, how do you do that? And uh -huh. one of the, I did a lot of research for my book. I, I talked to a lot of, um, professors and like, you know, astrophysicists and, um by all even like biologists mm -hmm. it's like how do we solve these problems like you know there there's some very significant changes to dealing with no gravity and there um, are people working but, on it so that's cool yeah there are mm -hmm. uh and there's some fascinating things that i mm -hmm. got to like w like play with and see and like see spec sheets on that that they're working on they're like oh so i have no idea what this is for but it's very cool <laughs> um you, so, so one of the things uh, I'll just share. One of the things is mm -hmm. a it's a it's basically like a sticky pack that has um, 
uh, like 3D printed tools, medical tools for triage, right? So you've got like arterial clamps and you've got scalpels and you've got gauze and you've got all the things that like a doctor would need baked into it that all the soldiers carry. And it seals the wound with like, imagine like a sticky seal around it. And then it pressurizes itself so that you can work in pressure to on a wound, right? So if you've got like a GSW, you can actually just paste this on the chest and work in a clean environment without blood floating everywhere and the whole problem of zero gravity. So, or zero That's pressure, clever. right? It'd still be zero right. gravity, but you have zero, you know, no zero pressure problem. Um, so it's a, you know, that was something where I went back and forth a lot because people were basically telling me that if you get hurt in space, it's pretty much it. <laughs> There's really not any, unless you can close that wound up, you're done. Mm -hmm. um so that was a really fun one i really i really liked that um and then i, I like the idea for the the i did like a whole computer program simulation on how to terraform mars and like some of the different things that we would have to do to try to raise the pressure and um so just like all the work that went into that and all the research that went into like how to get mars livable and habitable um was was fun and building building a city in a in a chasm you know um and, and just walling off the top and having basically like a subterranean city, uh, I thought was really cool. Well, if we do go to Mars, uh, as in to colonize Mars, that is where we're going to live. So nice job, because that's the point. We want to have fun, right? We can have stuff that, of course, it's not going to happen, but we want to tell a story that's okay, right? Like you said, there's a sci-fi fantasy kind of, it's okay in science fiction to also stretch it a little bit, but it needs to be realistic enough that we hit the I believe button, right? So making it right. a big giant cavern under that's that's brilliant. That's enough to hit the I believe button so you can keep going. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just need you to suspend disbelief long enough to let the characters land. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Just, you need to enjoy the ride just a little bit. And I'll tell you here at Chris Dragon Ship Publishing, we believe that if people like you, they will also like what you're writing. So for that, that's why we've asked some questions to get to know you better. What I'd also like to know is, what are you reading now? Oh, my God. Um, I'm actually, uh, Ethan, who posted in my chat, I'm reading his book. Um, and he's a, a very talented writer himself. Um so uh yeah he's uh he uh, i'm reading valor by dawn uh his his omnibus book uh books one through five mm. and uh it's um uh, it's epic it's really really good um you know yeah i highly recommend it um i don't read a lot these days uh because i'm a dad i'm doing all this other stuff I and feel I'm writing, you. but i do listen to audiobooks quite a lot nice. so and that counts uh, as reading don't let anyone tell you different that counts yeah 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 um but uh while i'm while i'm uh kind of in this break between books i'm, I'm not reading anything because i don't want it to to influence what i write next and i'm just enjoying enjoying reading uh, ethan's book so that's awesome uh, well nicely done ethan yeah thanks ethan <laughs> and what are you watching or have watched recently so i just watched three body problem um and Ooh, i haven't read the book i want to see one that those, one one of those one of those weird guys who who likes to try to watch the films first and then read the books um i don't know i think it's you're right that's a little film. backwards maybe it's because it's a little you do movies yeah i think so huh. um yeah so i i mean i did the same thing with harry potter even you know I, I waited to watch all the movies and then i went back and read the books and um i think i think it's because i want to enjoy the books and if i if i read the books first and then i watch the films I'm only going to be disappointed because the adaptation wasn't exactly right for whatever reason. So I'll be disappointed about that. But then also the books aren't as good anymore because, you know, it's kind of like all spoiled. But if I go the other way, then it's fine. So I don't know. It's just a weird psychological trick I'm playing on myself, which <laughs> great. <laughs> whatever it takes, um, man, whatever it takes. <laughs> geez. I love it. Uh, is this, so is this an interview or therapy? Three 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 like it? Yeah, I did. Uh, it was good. It, it it was interesting in that it had several storylines that just kind of abruptly stopped for no reason. And I'm hearing that it's the same in the book um, where where like you think the story is this and then like suddenly something happens and it changes it. And now the story is like going off this direction. It's like, oh, wait, what? What happened to those things? Um, mm -hmm. It was a little bit jarring, but I think it was done on purpose. So um, like I don't I don't think they forgot about 
those you know plot points. I think they just you know <laughs> I think they just said that's not important anymore, and they moved on to what was. And I I, I kind of liked it in that it it felt more realistic somehow because that's kind of how we are like in real life, right? Like if you're if you're working on something and then like you know somebody comes up with the same thing, you're not going to keep working on it. You're like, oh well, moving on to the next idea. Um, yeah, but that's so, not yeah, how we want to consume it, my fiction personally. Like, like life <laughs> yeah. has unanswered questions. That's why I don't even watch like unsolved murders, right? Like I like, nope, I only want to know if they're solved. Otherwise, don't tell me anything. Life's hard enough. I don't no, need that in my life. No true, <laughs> no true crime stories keeping Only up if they're night. solved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, um, yeah I, 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 I liked it. Um, you know, I'm, I think I just finished it last night. So I'm, st- I'm oh, still kind of processing still. it. Mm-hmm. But um but it was good. I mean, it was uh, it was beautiful. There were a couple, a couple were a little rough and, and weird, but um, you know that just makes me feel like you know that level of production is achievable. If I'm sitting there going, oh yeah, that scene's not that great. That visual effects isn't 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 you know that that profound. Like yay, because um, <laughs> if that can get distribution, then so can my stuff. Right? Um, You're like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I watch The Mandalorian. I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> come on sign me up i got this <laughs> yeah but but seriously like i try to watch just about everything sci-fi again because i feel like it's a playground for having the hard talks and, and i'm always constantly looking for those messages of like what is the what is the hard question that we're we're posing in this in this property whether it's a book or a film or comic book or whatever um you know like what what are we trying to figure out in the, in the future that we haven't solved yet and uh, I started watching The Silent Sea, which is all about like an Earth without water. Um, I didn't get very far because I fell asleep, but um, like sounds like Mars. Uh, I don't. <laughs> yeah, it 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 sounds it sounds cool. I like those kind of like you know far flung sci-fi. We've got a really big problem. You know, I one of the first sci-fi books I read was uh, When Worlds Collide, mm-hmm. and um, so I mean that's just kind of like you know really like really like strums my heartstrings you know like oh there's a giant asteroid coming for earth and everybody's got to get wiped gonna get wiped out amazing this is the best story ever and i just it's nostalgic for me and you don't do horror movies wait a minute so i am doing two horror movies oh uh, okay the there you go one. that makes more those sense are, to me <laughs> those, are the, those are the next two that i'm that I, but i don't watch horror movies which is going to be interesting um but uh, yeah, the next two films that I'm set to direct are both horror films. So yeah, see see how that goes. That's cool. And you really won't well, be. One's in a swamp with alligators and snakes, and I'm. I, oh, you your know, favorite. I've before. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, snakes. Okay, great. I'll be, you know, I'll be in a bubble. I'll be in the safety bubble. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No problem. You'll know where I am. I'm hiding in my trailer. You'll always be able to find me. <laughs> I mean, I was on one other set once where we had a snake handler on set because we we're shooting in like woods where there were snakes, and it was so cold that I was like, "There's no snakes out," and she came out with this like 14 foot long timber rattler that was like as thick as my arm, and I almost straight up fainted. Like I was like, she walked by and I was just like, "Oh, uh, like it was it was bad, it was bad." Thing is, <laughs> it was, it was so probably bad. sleeping and she had to pull it up because if you didn't want to wake that thing up, she found it. <laughs> And she was like, I'm going to move yeah. this thing before somebody Don't else would step up. on that yeah. thing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It was terrifying. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Um, and lastly, what are you listening to, like, music-wise? So I listen almost exclusively uh, while I'm writing to Lindsay Sterling. Uh, oh. She's a pop pop oh, violinist. Yeah. We've um, seen her in concert. She's, she's amazing. I really want to go to her concert. I just found oh, out yesterday so or day before yesterday that in my like the closest town to me, because mm-hmm. I live way out in the mountains, um, she she just had a concert here like over Christmas. And I was like, how did I miss this? Um, but yeah, I, I put her albums on um, on repeat and I just that's what I write to uh, I every it. day uh, without fail. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, good so call. if you're not familiar with call. Lindsay Sterling, check her out. She's Look she's her amazing. up. Yeah, no, she was wonderful. Her concert was fantastic. I, I wore the was totally rough shoes. Where she was, where she was like spinning from her hair or whatever. Was it that concert? No, before? it was the the tour before that one. But she still did fantastic stuff, like things that should not be humanly possible. Um, it's just the whole time. It's yes, 
yes. It's not like the violin is that easy. <laughs> so, right? No, I know. It's, I'm yeah. like, I don't know how she's, I don't, I don't, but I'm in, I'm in though. Keep going. I'm in. <laughs> she's right, don't she's stop, please. phenomenal. And it's amazing. So you, you're used to like someone singing at you and meeting your eyes and getting you engaged, right? But she's not doing that much, right? She does a little. But she's mainly just the way that she moves her body. She has you completely, you can't look anywhere else but at her. Like, yeah. it's just phenomenal the way she can command a stage with just her presence. It's really For cool. For sure. Yeah. Well, it's, I, it's I need talent. her to keep making music because I have more books to write. So she's That's right. Keep up. You're like, don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. I feel like uh, I should get like a Lindsay Sterling endorsement or something because I'm constantly telling everybody this is what you need to write to. You know, so Lindsay I, Sterling, if you watch this, look me up. I'm I'm gonna bet that you know she does make music f that she would write uh, music for movies. You could probably make this work. I'm sure. I mean, you I'm need sure. someone we, for the soundtrack, right? I mean, come on. Have have your people call mod people. We'll work. We'll work. We'll work. Yeah, I saw her in concert once. No sweat. I'll get right on it. <laughs> We're like this. <laughs> nice. Perfect. <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, the world's not as big as you think it is. So who knows? It's getting smaller every day. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, so now you do this for a living, having to, you know, talk about your movies and market them. So the last thing I want to ask is, um, who do you think will enjoy this book, this series, actually, the most? Um, so anybody like me who grew up reading sci-fi, you know, back in the like 90s, 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll, we'll like it because it's kind of a little bit more of a classic sci-fi where it's, it's kind of more character based than it is just like, you know, action heavy plot. Um, I actually have a lot of women 18 to 28 who, who really like my book. Um, that's most of the interaction I get on, on like social media is from that crowd. Because you rock um, the characters, man. We want characters. Yeah, because it's all about the characters. And there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's that, like, you know, that, that, like, simmering romance in the background between a couple of the characters. And, you know, there's, because they're real people in, like, real stressful situations. So uh, that kind of stuff happens. Um, so, yeah, so I think if if you, if you're into sci-fi at all, um, if you're into, into drama at all, um, a lot of people who read most sci-fi like it. Although, you know, it's not just, it's not just, like, you know, got some glory. It's it's got it's got a lot of character stuff to it, um, and not every character is in the military. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think uh, I think really just anybody who likes classic sci-fi is a is a is a potential thing. I love it. Very awesome. Well, thank you so much, James. Um, Safo's going to put the link up again for the whole series, and then if you are watching this anytime after Friday, what is that? April seventh. Fifth, I think. Fifth. If you're watching anytime yeah. after that, um, the description in the bottom, I'll make sure to put the link just for this book, too. So there will be multiple books. The series will be up there. Book three comes out on Friday. Um, so for all of you waiting, it will be there so ready for you. Uh, Megan McIntyre's on. Um, they say congratulations. And Holly Marie um, Philippe says also says congratulations. So you've got awesome. some fans Thanks, on guys. here. And Nick Blair came. Hi, Nick. Good to see you. Um, all right. Excellent. Excellent. And lastly, where can fans find you and your work? Uh, so I'm on, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and all those things. Uh, I've got a solo page. It's solo.to slash James Fox, all okay. one word. Um, and then my webpage is the James So the T H E James Fox. I love it. Yeah, don't get me started. There's there's so many James Foxes in the entertainment industry. It's so tough, man. I'm but you're the, the James Fox. <laughs> I'm the James Fox. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love um, it. I love yeah. it. Well, yeah. Thank you so cool. much. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And we will see you next week at 8 p.m. Central, where we launch our next book. Awesome. Thank you.